I'm a grenade without reason, ready to explode. I'm like a free locomotive, steaming out of control. I made you a martyr. Good D, starring Ildris Elbra. I'm really bad at names, so go look it up. Uh, you know, you should know by now that names is not my thing. But let's get into it. No Good Deeds, uh, a thriller, a horror, suspense, all that in one. Uh, I like this one better than I like A Walk Among the Tombstones. Uh, it's not getting that great reviews. A lot of people are saying that um, it, it's it's kind of uh, uh, what's the word for it? I don't know. They, they they're just they're they're not liking it, and and I like it. Uh, I know Skip went to go see it. Skip was kind of hesitant about it, but uh, overall, it was a good film. Uh, lot, lots of thrilling, uh, and I, 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 you know, I'll tell you what people didn't like about it. I feel like it it, it dragged a little bit, you know. You know, Idris Elba, Elba, Elba. Uh, you know, he he plays his uh, uh, part in the movie where he's um, an ex-convict that escapes from from uh, his uh, way back to prison. And he makes the story up that his car got, um, well, actually it did. His car, like he crashed his car on the side of the road. So uh, this lady lets him in, use the phone. But what drags on about this movie is that it takes about a good 25 to 30 minutes to actually get into the thrilling part. Uh, you know, it keeps dragging on and dragging on. So I feel like they could have cut some of that out and made it a little shorter. But overall, I like No Good Deed. I'm going to give No Good Deed a, a, a 6 out of 10. So you know if it's a six or above, I liked it. I'm Vince LaSpada, and we're sitting right back on the couch with Vinny and Skip right there on the Best Day Movie Show on YouTube.com. Ready? Yeah. And it's time for the Best Damn Movie Show is Movie News starring Vincent LaSpada and Dan Skip Allen. <laughs> hey, and welcome back to the Best in Movie Show. I'm your host, Vincent LaSpada. And Skip, hey, thanks, Vinny, for that intro. Man, that Vinny guy, he, he sure knows how to cook up a show. Yeah, make sure you don't get sued for that intro because, you know, only one man owns the rights to that. I didn't say let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, you didn't. But just be careful, my friend. Well, let's get into some movie news. Brought to you always by Las Spadas. If you want a good cheesesteak right from the heart of Philadelphia, go to Las Spadas. Laspadas.com on the web. Well, what is that doing? Okay. Where are the locations of Las Spadas? Orlando, Sanford, and Orange City. That's right. So if you're in the Orlando area, Lucia County, Seminole County, or Orange County areas, this was spot is for you. <clears throat> well, let's start off with uh, Dan Aykroyd building Ghostbusters franchise. Um, you know, he talks about uh, my whole thinking of the Ghostbusters is beyond Jesse Sukel, a prequel, or another movie. He also says that um, I'm thinking now, what does the whole brand mean to Sony? He says. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh boy, I lost it. Oh boy. Oh, here it is. What Pixar and Star Wars means to Disney, what Marvel means to Fox. Everybody of all of us of the team there now, the executive, the creators, myself, uh, Ivan Ramis, and you're thinking more of the terms of what we build this thing into the next 10 years. Just not a movie or a TV show, but what's the total totally of it. What's the whole my, uh, mythology from the beginning of our lives to the end of our lives? Ghostbusters at a nine-year-old Ghostbuster in high school. Yeah, I think what he's trying to get at is he wants to take Ghostbusters to the next level. Where they had two sequels back in the 80s, he wants to start it over again and he wants to create a franchise. The, the strength and the, the monetary value of a Lord of the Rings or a Star Wars or a Marvel Cinematic Universe where it's just not one, two, three, four, it's it's a whole world of Ghostbusters. I'm begging you, Dan Aykroyd, please just leave it alone. <laughs> just leave it alone. And then, then to follow the story up, that Nimrod, Bill Murray, comes out and wants to make 
the Ghostbusters females. Yeah, female Ghostbusters. Kristen Wiig, uh, Melissa McCarthy. I mean, some of the best comedic actresses going today. See, he, he wants to put them in a Ghostbusters movie. Have a he just wants to, he, See, and that's what you, and you say to me. You say, and people say to me, "Oh, Dan Aykroyd's a good actor." He he wants to ruin shit. He does not care anymore. Dan Aykroyd does not care about his film career anymore. I mean, listen, when he became an extra in, um, oh God, what's the, uh, Zoo, uh, Zombieland. Zombieland, you knew that he was done. And then the movie coming out called St. Vincent, he looks horrible in it. He looks horrible. He looks like he fell off a cliff. Well, I, I, I'm getting reports out of the Toronto International Film Festival that it's one of the best movies of the festival, that people are just dying laughing. It's so funny. It's so tender. It's so nice. So who knows? You know, you could be wrong. Well, listen, Bill Murray, please, just do me a favor. <laughs> Go sit in a trash can and die in it. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Uh, the board producers say that Matt Damon is returning... Uh, for the sequel, and producer Frank Marshall confirms the Born Five project. Yeah, you know, I think this when Jeremy Renner was um, in the Born movie, they referred to the Matt Damon character, Jason Bourne. But I think I think the fans, even though the Jeremy Renner Born movie made a lot of money, I think people always want Matt Damon to come back in this character. But Matt Damon kept on saying, "I'm not coming back unless." Paul Greengrass is coming back. Now, Paul Greengrass has gone on to do some really good movies like uh, Captain Phillips and United 93 and, and some movies like that. Yeah, Beautiful. Captain Phillips is really good with I, the ranks. Yeah, I really like those movies. But the first two Bourne movies were Matt Damon Paul Greengrass. He seems to have a grasp on this kind of thriller and I gotta say, political you, thing. I have and own all, five, all four of them on Blu-ray. I haven't seen them. Oh, wow, you're missing out. Uh, especially the first two with Matt Damon and Paul Greengrass directed. Uh, they're just great movies. Now, I'm going to throw this story to you because it's uh, about the Avengers 2 plot and summary. Yeah, I'm going to read the uh, plot that has leaked online of Avengers Age of Ultron 2. I just think my uh, the fans of the Best Damn Movie Show need to hear this. So here we go. Avengers Age of Ultron Plot synopsis. Uneasy alliances and un in unexpected action. Marvel Studios unveils the official plot synopsis for the Aven Avengers Age of Ultron, which teases uneasy alliances and unexpected action across the globe. Marvel Studios presents Age of Ultron, the epic follow-up to the biggest superhero movie of all time. When Tony Stark tries to jumpstart a dominant peacekeeping program, Things go awry, and the Earth's mightiest heroes, including Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, the Incredible Hulk, Black Widow, Hawkeye, are put to the ultimate test as fate of the planet hangs in the balance. As the villainous Ultron emerges, it is up to the Avengers to stop him from enacting his terrible plans, and soon, uneasy alliances, unexpected action paved the way for an epic, unique, global adventure. Marvel's... Avengers Age of Ultron stars Robert Downey Jr., who returns as Iron Man, along with Chris Evans as Captain America, Chris Hemsworth as Thor, Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk, together with Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow and Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye, and with the additional support of, support of Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury and Colby Smulders as Agent Maria Hill. The team must reassemble to defeat James Spader as Ultron, a terrifying technological villain, hell-bent on human extinction. Along the way, they confront two mysterious and powerful newcomers, Wanda Maximoff, played by Elizabeth Olsen, and Petru Maximoff, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, and meet an old friend as a new form, with Paul Bettany becomes the Vision. Written and directed by Joss Whedon and produced by Kevin Feige, Marvel's a Avengers Age of Ultron is based on the ever-popular Marvel comic book series, The Avengers, first published in 1963. Get set for an action-packed thrill ride when the Avengers return in Marvel's Age of Ultron on May 1st, 2015. And I'm going to hand it back over to Vinny for some more news. Well, that was uh, pretty interesting. Uh, are you excited to see The Avengers? Oh my god. I cannot be... I don't think... I can be more excited for a movie 
I mean, I, I was excited for a few movies this year, but I don't know if my, my, my excitement can be any higher for that movie. I am so just, oh God, I wish May 1st was here today. Jack Reacher, author, says the movie sequel will have a new director, Lee Children, author of the Jack Reacher movie, says the sequel of the Tom Cruise movie adaption won't be directed by Christopher uh, Macquarie. Macquarie. Yeah, Chris Macquarie um, is working with Tom Cruise currently on the latest Mission Impossible movie, Mission Impossible 5. And from what the, uh, the reports are is that the post-production of Mission Impossible 5 are going to go into where they're going to have to start filming Jack Reacher 2. So he can't do it, otherwise he would have done it. So, oh, so Tom Cruise isn't doing it. No, Tom Cruise is doing it because his filming of Mission Impossible 5 is going to be done. So he can go and film Jack Reacher 2, but Christopher McQuarrie has to do the post-production work. So the special says, effects and Is stuff. this Mission Impossible 6 or 7? 5. Because Ghost Protocol is 4, and now this is Mission Impossible 5. Uh, David Fitchner says, Gone, a girl who played the fire will happen. David Fitcher claims the sequel of The Girl, The Dragon to Do, uh, is still happening, but will be very different from the book. Yeah, well, okay. Needless to say, they have a girl that played with fire in the Swedish version. That's the sequel to The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo in Swedish. They have not made the American version of that yet. Now, it's very kind of hard to turn that storyline into a movie, so I myself think that I it's it's good to change some of the storylines to make it more interesting. And I think this is good news for everybody that was wondering if Daniel Craig was coming back because he he had his whole I want more money and all this stuff. And so David Fincher just said, Alright, well you want more money, you discuss that with the people that make the movie. I'm gonna go make Gone Girl. And so that's what he did. So now he's coming out with a press statement saying they're gonna do a uh, the girl who played with fire is just going to be a little bit different, and Daniel Craig is going to be back. So that's good news for everybody that liked that movie. Also, Bond 24 is going to be starting, uh, it says, uh, December 2014. And that's another Daniel Craig franchise. Now, I don't know about you, I know you're not into your British actors and British accents, but I'm, I'm just happy that Daniel Craig's got these franchises, Bond, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo franchise, because I want to see him on big screen more often. And you know, I don't think we get to see him enough. What do you think? You, you like Daniel Craig? Or would you rather not see him that often? I don't know. I like how we don't see him that much. Oh, okay. Alright, so that's really... <laughs> oh, man. Hopefully you out there watching disagree with Vinny. Uh, Skull, uh, Skull Island, uh, gets Tom Hiddleston. Oh, yeah. Tom Hiddleston, you know, he's doing a lot of different things, of course. You know, he was low-key, and he was in the movie, uh, the vampire movie, earlier this year. Um, and now he's got Crimson Peak coming up, and so it looks like he's going to be signed on to uh, Skull Island, which is the prequel to King Kong. And Legendary Films has got the, the rights to King Kong now, and we all know they get the rights to Godzilla. So, hmm. Who had it the first time? Uh, Universal put out... So Universal has nothing to do with it now? No, I think uh, they, they, the, the, the rights lapsed from Universal and, and Legendary bought it. That's horrible. Now, it's interesting that they're doing a prequel because I know they're going to do a sequel to Godzilla and we <clears> may <throat> see the big team up down the road, maybe in five years or so, we might see the big team up of Godzilla and King Kong. Cross your fingers, folks. Uh, Will Ferrell teases Zoolander 2 return script. Um, he says that uh, they're getting closer and closer to uh, filming and uh, putting out Zoolander 2. Now, are you a fan of Zoolander? Are you a fan of Ben Stiller? Are you a fan of those movies? I I, I haven't seen Zoolander in a while, so I can't say that I'm a fan. But for what I remember of it, I think it was pretty funny. Well, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go out on a record and say this: I'm not a fan of Zoolander. I did not like Zoolander. And, you know, where Vinny said all that stuff about Ghostbusters, I'm the same way with Zoolander. I am not a fan of that kind of humor, or Ben Stiller, or Will Ferrell, please, no more Zoolander. 
I know I'm in the minority here. Well, they've been talking about Zoolander for a while now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And for at least four years. Well, were you waiting on Ben Stiller? Because he's the director and the writer. So he's been doing other things. Uh, Star Wars rumored to have an Obi-Wan Kenobi spin-off movie. Yeah, of course we know they're filming uh, Star Wars Episode 7 right now, and then they got the director Rain Johnson for 8 and 9, then there's a couple movies in between, and Duncan Jones is going to be directing one of the one, one, one of the in-between movies. Well, there's a rumor that Obi-Wan is going to be the third of the in-between movies. Now, I'll tell you what, I... One of the better parts of the prequels was Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. I would love to see Adventures of Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know, after Anakin turns into Darth Vader, I'd like to see what happens with Obi-Wan. Yeah, we have the Clone Wars TV show, but I think there's plenty of adventures we could do with Obi-Wan Kenobi. What do you think? I mean, I know you're not a big Star Wars fan. Do you think he was one of the characters you'd like to see more of, or, or no, not at all? I would say him... Obi-Wan Kenobi, or I would say um, Jar Jar Banks. I like Jar Jar. I think Jar Jar Banks is funny. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. You don't like right, Jar Jar Why did I ask Vinny that question? All right, what's the next movie topic? You don't like Jar Jar Banks? Nah, I think me and the whole world hate Jar Jar Banks. And, of course, you'd be the one guy that would like him. <laughs> what's wrong with Jar Jar Banks? Stupid, stupid, stupid. I like Jar Jar. You know, I, you know another, another thing I was thinking about, too? I wonder if they had a backstory of Obi Wan Kenobi or um, C three PO. Well, the the backstory is he was created by Anakin Skywalker. No, 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 no. C three PO and R two D two. Yeah, had the backstory of that. They have a backstory of that. You, all their backstory that you've seen of C three PO, you've seen in the movies. They're on all the movies because Anakin Skywalker created C three PO. Yeah, but and then he appears throughout all the movies. Yeah, right? but I'm talking about the creation, the concept. You know what I mean? Like him growing up, him coming. He's a robot. Him. Yeah, but what made him build him? He's Anakin Skywalker. He was a smart kid. Anyways, Finding Nemo casts Ilbris Albra and Dominic West uh, for new uh, voices for. Finding Dory. I'm interested. Those are very... Dominic West is a British actor, and Idris Elba are both British actors. I'm wondering what kind of characters. You know, it's interesting, you know, when you do animated movies, who who the heck the voices are going to play, what kind of characters. I'm thinking maybe like sharks or something. It's so funny because I haven't heard Alan talk about it at all on her show at all. No? No. I wonder, what do you think, sharks? Or sharks or some kind of... Whale? Vicious, yeah, some vicious... I'm thinking bad, bad uh, sea life. Uh, Married with Children gets a spin-off return on, this time it's about Bud. Yeah, I did. I heard that the the Bud character was going to get a spin-off, what, 10, 15, 20 years later? And it's funny because uh, he, uh, do you know, who he, you know who he is? Oh, God. I had his name on the tip of my tongue. Now, uh, oh, God. Oh, man. Because he works in um, Florida at a place called Twisty Tree. Now that is very interesting because I I never would have pictured. I mean, you know he's not doing anything, but working at an ice cream place. I mean, that is that is like that's worse than Screech. Screech from the TV show he was on. He got into porn. So I mean, these guys. Some of these people just fall when they Ed fall. They fall. Ed O'Neill. No, Ed O'Neill's on. Ed O'Neill. No, he's on Modern Ed Family. Ed O'Neill's on Modern Family. It's it's um. What's his, what's his bud? Oh, David, um... David Faustino. Yeah. David Faustino, yeah. You know, some of these guys in these sitcoms, they just fall right off the map, you know? It, it, they just don't... Because they, they, do, they do one thing and they're known for it, so they don't really think, take it... Yeah. Uh, Morgan Freeman joins the cast of Ted 2, and you told me something pretty interesting about this one. Yeah, well, Ted 2, I think he's going to be playing a... Um, evangelistic lawyer, like a like a southern lawyer, and, and he's going to have this like southern draw, and he's going to be from the south, and he's going to be like an evangelist, kind of like, well, sir, you need a kind of accent like that. But thing is, he's just taking a lot of these kind of roles. Like this year, he's been in so many movies, but come to find out, he did an interview for Dolphin Tale 2, and he told one of the interviewers, why do you do these movies? Why do you do... Why you come back for Dolphin Tale 2? And he was very honest and he said, Oh, I just want the money. I'm just phoning it in. I just want the money. I'm just going to come there, do my job, take my money, and go home. 
I guess at his age you can do that now. Two-time Oscar winner, one of the great voices in Hollywood. Yeah, uh, you know, and I and I know I know you know I'm not a big fan of Morgan Freeman. I I I just think he's a grumpy old man. <laughs> well, talk about a we need to reboot that with him with him and Jack Nicholson <laughs> together. Grumpy old man again. Uh, Twenty two Jump Street in the works, um, and uh, but at this time. Uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller are the producers only on this. Yeah, those guys, we know they've uh, directed the last two, uh, 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street, and they directed the Lego movie. Well, this time, they're not going to direct it. And people are saying that it's come out that, whoa, is it going to be as good? Is it going to be as funny? Well, I hope it's, I want some new blood in there. In my opinion, I didn't like 22 Jump Street. So I would like a new director, maybe the the, uh, the Fairley Brothers or somebody that can ingest some new blood into this thing because I, I think you're you know just like you know the Hangover you had Twenty One Jump Street was a classic then Twenty Two Jump Street sucked in my opinion. What well, I I mean I think I think after the third hang I think the third Hangover sucked. I think the, the second one. No, I think the second one was okay. Did you? I didn't like it. I, I think see, a lot and, of and I didn't think like it. I don't think Twenty Jump Street was that great. I just I think they they come up with these ideas and they gotta run with it, but because it know. made money, the first one made so much money. Let's make two. Let's make three, and then eventually they start going downhill. And that's why sequels don't do as well as originals. Um, and now you have a story about um, Denzel Washington. Yeah, uh, Denzel Washington had well. It was rumored that uh, there was a Magnificent Seven remake in the works. And that Denzel Washington was attached. Well, now we got Antoine Fuqua, who he's worked with a few different times, recently on The Equalizer, Training Day. So you know these two kind of work together pretty good. But also uh, the main ca character um, of the Magnificent Seven, the the original Magnificent Seven, was one of the classic uh, actors of his day. Um, and so to have another black actor, the, one of the great black actors of today, to reprise that role, I, I can't wait. I, I, I would love to see Denzel Washington in a Western. And The Magnificent Seven is such a classic. I don't normally like to see classics remade, but I'm kind of interested to see Antoine Fuqua and Denzel Washington together again in a great classic movie, you know? Oh, no, I would too. And, and it's going to be interesting to see them two work together. For the third time. This will be the third, either the third or fourth time they've worked together. Well, wrapping up the movie news, uh, Rambo 5 rumored. Uh, the title is Rambo the Last Blood. And uh, filming will start this fall. Um, so we'll uh, see how uh, the fifth installment of Sylvester Stallone's Rambo. I wasn't a big fan of the last two. I was, I mean, the last one was okay in my opinion. Two and three stunk. In my opinion, First Blood was a great, great movie. I mean, it was so good. Um, Ryan Dennehy was so nasty. Then you had the guy from uh, Miami, um, um, the TV show from Miami, you know, um, CSI Miami. Uh, David Caruso was in it. He was like, played a young cop, and oh, it was just so good. And this one's got a similar title. Instead of First Blood, we got Last Blood. So maybe this is really going to have kind of a, a, a good story in it instead of just him just going to some... I heard it's going to involve a Mexican drug cartel. So who knows? He might just be shooting up everybody. Who knows if Stallone and his mind have? Yeah, yeah. And he has all these crazy ideas. Yeah. And then we also heard there's a possibility of a Rocky with, with uh, Pablo Creed's son. Well, the, the rumor is it's supposed to be Stallone's son and Apollo Creed's son, and they're both the trainers. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting if they well, do another Rocky. We'll see. We'll see how that all pans out. Uh, before we go, you have anything else to add? No, just follow, um, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends. You know, all ten people that follow this uh, page, please tell your ten friends, each of you. That's a challenge that I give you, everybody out there. Follow this page. Come back. We're, tr we're doing the best we can to help you guys. Be get, get information about movies and news and so forth. Um, 
And like I said, stay tuned for our new our Liam Neeson segment. We're going to be doing very soon. Uh, and we, we do these to tell you people what to see and what not to see. And we enjoy seeing these movies as much as you do. So we try to give you the most updated information without spoiling the movie. That's right. That's right. Well, until next time, uh, where can they find you at? You can always find me at uh, from the fourth row at wordpress.com or my name, Dan Skip Allen, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And right here on the Best Day of Movie Show. Well, you can always find me th uh, with this fine gentleman every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, on the Best of Movie Show.com, uh, This Monday coming up is our 100th anniversary, so we'll see who's going to be stopping by and talking to us. Also, you can find me on the best day movie show com for all the information, updated news, and reviews. But until next week, I'm your host, Vince Lospada. I am Skip. And we'll see you at, at the, the movies. movies. Good night, everybody.